Human beings have done quite enough to cause certain animals to go extinct, while other types of animals fell due to their, well, let's just say, natural selection. As sad as it is, there are scientists and researchers doing their best to revive certain species vital to life here on Earth. From a silly flightless bird to a fluffy elephant, here are 15 extinct animals being brought back to life. Number 15. Northern White Rhinos Now it's kind of a bummer to be the most endangered of anything, but the Northern White Rhino takes the top spot for most endangered mammal on Earth. Scientists have started to use IVF, in vitro fertilization, to revive this ailing species. The two remaining rhinos, a mother and a daughter named Najin and Fatu, are currently being protected at a conservancy near Mount Kenya. The process that's being used takes the sperm of already dead rhinos and then combines it with genetically processed eggs of still living southern rhinos. In order to collect the eggs, scientists have had to invent a special 1.8 meter device that stimulates the female's ovaries. Once the process has begun, it takes roughly about 18 months from start to finish, slating the birthday of the next generation for some time in the year 2022. This causes for their near extinction, being over hunting, civil war, and the destruction of their habitats, the northern white rhino isn't exactly going down without a fight. With the help of science and a caring group of researchers, the rhino could see a solid resurgence in the near future. Such a beautiful and powerful creature deserves no less, in my humble opinion. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. The saber-toothed tiger. Fierce, ancient, and iconic doesn't even begin to describe our next entry on the list. A saber-toothed tiger. How could something so powerful end up going extinct in the first place? Well, according to science, 10,000 years ago, climate change, the subsequent loss of prey, and overhunting from our ancient ancestors led to this Smilodon to perish. Its home in those times were the icy tundras of North America. But some scientists believe that evidence points to this species having existed as far back as 1.2 million years ago. Weighing in at an average of 490 to 880 pounds, this apex predator would have a pretty easy time surviving should it be revived in the near future. One of the major questions posed to scientists is how we can create a correct environment to bring back such an ancient and predatory species. While there's no real straightforward answer, although many scientists do believe that the key to reviving such animals is finding and or creating a proper environment that will allow them to flourish as well as they should. As super cool as it would be to have such an animal roaming the earth again, such a feat is going to be difficult. So here's to you and your safe return, saber-toothed tiger. Number 13, the dodo. Which among you could guess that such a silly and animated bird like the dodo would have genomes stemming from the dinosaurs? I know I sure as heck wouldn't have. It was, at its time of discovery in the 1600s, the closest living relative to the dinosaur. Coming in at one meter in height, this flightless and dim-witted bird existed on the island of Mauritius, but became extinct in the 1600s shortly after humans had discovered it. Now, more than 400 years later, scientists believe that they can bring the bird back by cloning some of its closest relatives. Now, I know what you're thinking. What does it all really mean that they can bring back dinosaurs? Well, the short answer is they really can't. But we could still get its closest living relative along with passenger pigeons. What did cause the dodo to go extinct? Well, apart from not being the smartest bird, its instinct to lay only one egg on the ground where 
where rats and other animals could eat it didn't exactly help its case so much. This is making scientists ask if they should even try bringing the dodo back. Well, I for one would love to see a dodo again because they seem so goofy and fun. Number 12. Pyrenean Ibex the Pyrenean Ibex, which is the fancy pants term for the ancient version of the mountain goat, started its revival in 2003 after going completely extinct in January of 2000 with the death of a goat named Celia. In the 1800s, the long majestic horns the goat had made it the target of many hunters looking to claim them as a trophy. Once humans realized that the species was nearing extinction, well it was already too late. Even before Dolly the Sheep was cloned in 1996, a group of Spanish scientists began to research the subject in 1989. Who did they attempt to clone? Well, you guessed it, the Pyrenean Ibex. Before Celia died, this group had taken DNA samples. After studying the ibex physiology, scientists then determined that a crossbreed between a regular goat and an ibex would serve as an excellent surrogate mother. Using 57 surrogate mothers, scientists then took Celia's genetic code and injected it into the empty eggs. Seven of them became pregnant, and one of those seven gave birth to a baby Celia clone. Wow, the magic of science. Do you know no bounds? Number 11. The Gastric Brooding Australian Frog Ribbit, ribbit. In frog speak, that means here I come, baby. The gastric brooding frog, also known as the Australian frog, is not really as dark and melancholy as its name makes it out to be. It's making its comeback, though. Discovered in 1972, the species quickly left the face of the earth in the 80s. Perhaps there's a connection there. Well, the frog was thought to be killed off by a fungal infection brought on by human contact. Before we get into their revival, I'd like to mention something that's pretty cool about them. The process of pregnancy. This frog literally eats the fertilized eggs, and in the process, its stomach then transforms from an acid bath into a sterile, comfy womb. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, before the extinction of the frog, scientists actually froze some of its cells, which were already in its embryo state. This is a crucial stage, just before it becomes a tadpole. Because of that reason, for its initial extinction, scientists are really unsure if after they do bring back the frog that it won't actually go extinct again. So let's raise a pint to this species and cheers to its healthy and prosperous return. Number 10. The Passenger Pigeon Already mentioned on the list, we've arrived back at our buddy the Passenger Pigeon. Widely found during the early 1800s, this pigeon was hunted and deforested into extinction over the course of the next 100 years or so, with the last one being shot in 1900. Now imagine being the person who shot the very last of a species. It would be quite an intense feeling, I could imagine. Without any intact cells to actually reproduce, scientists had to dig around the cells and gene pools of relative pigeons. Bit by bit, the scientists were able to reconstruct the genetic code of the passenger pigeon with a few enhancements because of the puzzle-like way that they brought it back. The cloning techniques that were used had to be different from previous ones because the process for birds has to be different. The nucleus of the egg needs to be removed by scientists, but because the egg is well, an egg with a shell, scientists could use older techniques without breaking the shell and therefore killing the baby inside. Why am I suddenly craving some scrambled eggs with toast? Number 9. The Glyptodont This next animal is an absolute tank. No, seriously, it's literally a tank. No, I'm just kidding. But the glyptodont has been referred to as an enormous version of an armadillo, which is the kind of animal version of a tank. Sporting a large armored hide, this mammal would be discovered to have gone extinct in North America near the end of the last ice age, despite being quite a successful species. Using found DNA, scientists were able to determine that the genealogy of the glyptodont spanned only 35 million years, which isn't a whole lot of time when talking about the 
the roots of a certain species. Because it's viewed as a successful one, there is a fairly heated debate amongst scientists as to why exactly the animals did go extinct in the first place, with the obvious climate change being the most supported theory. After finding the shells of the glyptodont, scientists throughout history have tried to find which mammal such a shell could belong to. Coming up with absolutely nothing, scientists then defaulted to the armadillo, because it's the only marsupial with such a tough exterior armor. I sometimes wish I could have an armor like that, though I'm not sure exactly what I'd do with it. It just sounds cool. Number 8. The Tasmanian Tiger not to be confused with the wily Tasmanian devil, the thylacine, aka Tasmanian tiger, shares a similar fate as the Australian frog, death by fungus. Oh, and shooting, of course. But fungus, it's, it's still there. Scientists believe that it first hit the world stage four million years ago, and then saw its dying day in September of 1936. Though the Tasmanian tiger looks like a cat, and is literally called a tiger, it's actually not. It falls under the marsupial family of species along with koalas, kangaroos, and so on. It would be first and last of the marsupial family to be carnivorous as well. Though it would be possible to bring back this singular creature, and is in the process of being researched, scientists are not really all that hopeful that it's going to happen anytime soon. In order to bring it back in full, they would need a marsupial host, just like Celia the goat, that could support and give birth to its clone. Unfortunately, they haven't found any species that can support this. I suppose it's a problem that comes with being too original. You can't be brought back from the dead. Number 7. Aurochs the first attempt to revive the next animal on our list, the aurochs, was in 1930 by two German brothers, Lutz and Heinz Heck, who were unabashedly Nazi supporters. I mean, who the heck do they think they were? They were Nazis, so I'm giving myself a pass on that one. Anyways, uh, the Heck brothers had found a way to sort of reverse engineer the breeding of aurochs, and they bred bulls with similar attributes to the aurochs. This is called, rather pointedly I might add, backbreeding. This, over a long while, did give them what they would selfishly call the Heck Bulls. Well, bull heck to that. I can't really think of any heck jokes, but that name certainly deserves more. Anyways, throughout World War II, the heck cattle seem to have survived. There have been a couple of attempts at recreating their original environment, consisting mostly of thick forests to little avail. Even today, the heck cattle are subject to multiple backbreeding experiments, not to necessarily bring back the look of the cattle, but rather their behavior. Though they may have gone extinct long ago, they sure have made a heck of a comeback. Nailed it. Number 6. Quagga Onto a kind of zebra with stripes on only half of its body. The quagga went extinct in 1883. 100 years later, in 1983, scientists used a technique similar to backbreeding in order to restore the quagga back into existence. The technique was pushed forward by the notion that it's not too far separated from the modern-day zebra, and through selective breeding, could be brought back. The product of these experiments, deemed the Quagga 2.0, still roam in the wild today in the Elandsberg Nature Preserve in South Africa. After studying about a dozen specimens from museums around the world, Dr. Robert Fleischer had come to the conclusion that the quagga was an isolated species in South Africa for about 200,000 years. Coming in at a whopping 8 feet 5 inches tall, the quagga are said to have roamed in herds of about 30 to 50 at the time. While they existed, they have been said to be a lively and wild animal. Imagine just trying to tame an animal of that height. Challenge accepted, quagga. I'm 6 foot 4. I'm pretty sure I'd probably get trampled really fast, though. Number 5. The Irish Elk the next animal has been widely misnamed. The Irish elk neither lived in Ireland, nor is it really an elk. Lies abound. It is, in fact, a deer, 
a gigantic deer at that. And on top of that, it's the largest deer to have ever existed. It's said to have been 7 feet tall, with an extra 12 feet from their antlers. 12 whole feet! That would be a crazy way to die. You know, getting impaled on one of those bad boys? Scientists have found well-preserved pieces of its DNA, so for now, it's on the short list of animals to be cloned. though it's not exactly sure when the process is going to take place. The Irish part of the name is only because fossils of the beast were found in Ireland, though this deer was most likely found throughout Europe itself, along with Southern Asia and Northern Africa. Again, like most others on the list, the Irish elk met its doom because of the last ice age. I wish I could have been there to see all these super animals. Though, let's be honest, I probably wouldn't have lasted very long, especially without internet. Am I right? Number 4. The Elephant Bird One of the lucky few to make it through the Ice Age, the Elephant Bird was unlucky around the year 1000. Though it's not really known for sure, humans once again are thought to be the ones to blame for killing off this flightless bird. They lived on the island of Madagascar and are close relatives of the ostrich, though they more closely resemble the kiwi. Standing at 9.8 feet tall and weighing about 1,600 pounds, the elephant bird actually does live up to its name by being the largest bird to have ever existed. There's a good amount of evidence that the bird was hunted by our ancient ancestors and actually eaten. This was concluded through the marks left in fossils by tools used for the kill. The thing is 1,600 pounds after all. That's a whole lot of meat. Still though, the hunting wasn't the only thing that brought them down. There's also a theory that human disease contributed greatly to their extinction, along with their eggs being laid on land and therefore easier to obtain for predators. Whatever the case may be, there's no doubting that these are some super epic birds. Number 3. The Ground Sloth Speaking of gigantic, just imagine Sid from the Ice Age movie, but way, way bigger. That's what we have on our hands with the ground sloth, not too dissimilar to the tree sloth. This is another one of those unfortunate buggers that didn't make it through the Ice Age. Living all over North and South America, the most recent surviving ground sloths were detected in Antilles and existed there around the year 1500 BC. Though the Ice Age takes the claim as number one theory for their extinction, this is another animal that has many, many different theories and factors that could have contributed to its demise. Despite being so large, the ground sloth apparently had a pretty easy time concealing itself from the surrounding predators thanks to its color, and it's also another animal whose fossils were found with marks left by the tools of hunters from the period. According to scientists, there are certain groups amongst them who are actively trying to bring back the ground sloth. How far along they are? Well, that's actually uncertain for now. Though technology has certainly come far enough that at least a clone can't be too far in the distance. Number 2. The Woolly Mammoth The modern-day African elephant and the woolly mammoth share many, many different attributes. From its enormous size down to the size of their tusks, the major difference between the two, though, is, well, one of them is woolly. Woolly is uh, being furry, by the way. And their furriness? Well, that's what made them very suited to last the Ice Age. So why the heck did they disappear? Well, guess it right this time, people. Because, yeah, we messed those guys up. Again. But they really had some great fur to keep us all warm, right? And the meat? Well, that was advantageous to humans during the period for its durability. Mostly found in what has become to be known as the woolly steppes here in North America, the woolly mammoth could also be found in Eurasia. The resurrection of the woolly mammoth is one that is hotly debated in the scientific community. There's a group of Harvard students who claim to be on track to bring it back, while another group of scientists say that this is all hype and it's them just grasping for funding. I really hope that the first group isn't lying, though. I'd love nothing more than to see one of these mamma jammas up close. Number 1. Dinosaurs Mother freaking dinosaurs, everybody. That's right, we're setting course for some Jurassic Park-level stuff right here. 
Maybe without all the people getting eaten while sitting on the toilet and dying this time around though. While the movie does hinge on bringing back dinosaurs through DNA found in a mosquito, scientists now believe that it's impossible, though at the time of filming it was believed to be the only way that something this cool could have happened. Truly incredible, right? The fact is truly crazier than fiction, that much is clear. So here's the details. It turns out that scientists have been digging around a different path to dinosaurs through none other than chickens. That's right, the thing they serve up fried and in buckets is our key to unlocking dinotastic theme parks. Because DNA breaks down over time, the blood options out. Even with the chicken though, the chances of being able to clone something from millions of years ago is pretty slim. Unless, no, it's, no, no, it's, it's not possible. The only way to do this is if scientists get really lucky and find some even decently preserved dino DNA. To quote Dr. Malcolm from Jurassic Park, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Well, so long everyone. I'm off to get some fried chicken and rewatch Jurassic Park. If it did exist though, which dinosaur would you visit first? Also, check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.